I wasn't live on Facebook. <laughs> Working now. Live video is starting. Perfect. Awesome. I'm still confused by the lack of YouTube. If I check on here, it says it's going, right? Yes, it does. Okay, cool. I'll just hope that it is. Okay. Enough talk. More drawing. Here we go. All right, so <clears throat> the software I'm using today is called Clip Studio Paint. Uh, I really like this software. It's pretty easy to use. Uh, it gives a lot of natural brush feel uh, when you're painting. And I love all the different tools and features it has. I have version 1 um, Pro. Um, there's one above it, um, and there's more updated versions as well. But I don't worry about those so much as long as this continues to work I'm happy so uh, first I need to figure out exactly where this animal is going get a rough sketch in and then we'll start painting on top of that so uh, proportionally uh, if you're wondering about my canvas size and my dimensions it's a 36 inch by 24 inch canvas size uh, digitally shrunk down uh, at 350 DPI, which is uh, the pixel density. And I like to use this particular oil paint brush. I believe it comes with Clip Studio Paint. I've downloaded a bunch, but I'm pretty sure this oil paint brush is one that is standard. And what I like most about it, as you can see when I brush on some stuff here, it's got a nice texture to it. And then it also uh, it works well when you try to to blend it with other colors. So it doesn't just paint over the top, but it actually grabs some of what it's touching. And so this is the color without any influence. And then when you put it on the black here, it pulls right off of that. So I really, really, really love the way that you can blend it. And when you paint on top of it, uh, it, it thickens and thickens and gets more dense, just like normal paint would. So I'll go ahead and uh, we'll get rid of this layer that I was just messing around on. Yeah, delete. And we'll get started with our base sketch. Um, there's a lot of different ways that you can go about making this work. Uh, I have watched a lot of other artists and their methods, and everybody's is always a little different. Uh, mine is probably different than a lot of other people's as well. Um, I, I don't tend to do the refining stage. Um, a lot of people will do like uh, a rough sketch and then they'll do a, a refined sketch on top of it, a nice cleaned up one, and then they'll block in their color and then they'll add shadows and light and keep refining and refining until it gets to the final piece. Um, you'll see what I do, but I just kind of wing it. Whatever I'm feeling in that moment is whatever I feel is good for that piece, and that's what I do. So, let's see. Uh, got the, the bill. The tip of the bill is gonna be over here, doing this sort of a angle, like that. And it stretches back over this way to somewhere around here. And let's see, we got the top of the bill. I normally start with the base of the head first, but this spoon bill is a little strange in composition. And the way that he has his head angled is a little strange. And so I just kind of feel like drawing it from the tip of the bill first so that I don't uh, mess up the length of the bill. I really want to get it feeling like it's accurate. Alright. And then 
the bill kind of bends up a little bit back up over here and starts curving in and then it starts to angle up this way a bit and it has this really interesting curve going farther back than I might normally think and it's slightly down from the rough eye position over here right around there and I'm not worried about making this absolutely perfect uh, I'm really just trying to get the the proper spacing down I want to make sure that I have everything where it needs to be on this particular canvas and I'm not worried about fancy lines I'm not worried about cleanup I'm not worrying if this <laughs> looks like a little kindergarten drawing at the moment <laughs> how messy it is that's totally fine I'm gonna paint over all this anyway okay so then this back kind of comes up over here we got the start of this and then we got this wing that comes up over here back down this way and it's not that long it's really more like this like that I guess it is that long and it might help if I just back out a little bit so I don't lose the overall feel of placement of where things are on this image okay let me come back down this way like that got the other leg over here this one seems a little more angled up like that and you notice like I kind of kind of make little scribble marks and and whatnot as I'm trying to get this work in the right way All right. have that come down and then there we go and then this part of the tail or the body comes out over this way and starts to swoop down and we can even see that it comes down over this way and down like that and then there's a little bit of a difference between certain parts of the feathers back here like that and up over here I want to get I want to get that feeling in there and then he also has part of the other wing showing over this way and kind of coming back there and so that's what this is down on this side connecting right into this and I'll just draw some kind of rough feather direction lines so I can stay in tune with that as I paint later on top of it get some of those other feathers in here it's got a really interesting feather structure up over this way and so I'm gonna look for the first main break the part where it's not just an overlap of feathers but where the wing would actually separate looking for that darker area there and then like this comes up and swings over got some coming down this way and just 
once again, you know, not worried about being perfect here. It's going to be messy, and that's totally fine. Just really trying to get rough shapes, rough placement, rough perspective. I want to know that this is looking pretty much in the right spot before I start painting things. Not that I won't go back in later and, and correct it. I can always paint over the top. That's the one of the benefits of digital work is you can always undo, you can always paint over, just add another layer. It makes it really easy in terms of cleanup and process and all that kind of stuff. Okay. And I'm going to get a little bit more of the neck over this way. And try to get some more of the the feel of this bird's head. Have it come on over here. And I know you can't hear my music uh, because that would give me a copyright strike and I'm not out to get this video removed. I would like these to stay on my channels. Uh, but if you are curious as to what I listen to when I paint, it varies by the day. Today's choice is a Hawaiian playlist primarily featuring Israel Kamiko Wo Wo Lele. Or <laughs> Kamiko Wo Wo Ule. Eh, something like that. I probably butchered it. In any case, I, I don't know how you can think of Hawaiian music and not think of Israel. He is, uh, he was. Uh, super influential on uh, Hawaiian music spreading to modern America. So, really great stuff. Okay, just some more roughing in. I'm going to add a lot more detail later. Just getting rough placement here. And trying to get the eye to look like it's actually looking at us. There we go. The mouth might go down just a little bit more like that. And there's some difference up over here, some more texture like that. All right. Cool. All right, it, this is still very sloppy, very scribbly. We will be cleaning this up. Don't worry. If you want to paint along with me, that's totally fine. Um, if you have your own bird photo reference, or if you uh, saw the photo that I displayed at the beginning, and you want to use that to kind of paint along the same thing as me, you can totally do that. Um, one thing that you should know, uh, anytime you're using photo reference from someone else, you should always credit it. That person is responsible for that image, that composition, uh, the way it was taken, the way that you found it and were inspired by it. You know, they, they put that effort in there. And so it's important to make sure that you give accreditation to the people that you're borrowing from. Um, and I'll clean that up later. It's a little sloppy. That's okay. Have it come out just a little bit and then loop down. Cool, cool. And there's also a little bit of a bumpy ridge over here, like that. He's got some fuzz, some bird fuzz, and some little feathers poking off the back of his neck there. Even got some 
coming off the side over here like that and then I'm going to get some directional lines for the way I want the feathers to move over here trying to make sure that I'm giving it that curved look so that it looks like it's wrapping around the form so that it's more 3D than 2D hopefully this is reading as a spoon bill to you um, when I paint I try to maintain a semi sense of realism but I never want it to lose that look of a painting some people try to paint um, and it, it's a style to do it that way there's nothing wrong with it but uh, they try to paint like it's a photograph they want it to be exactly like a photograph kind of indistinguishable from a photograph and to me that's just kind of like I mean it's an impressive human feat to be able to do that no doubt it takes a lot of talent it takes a lot of accuracy and practice that's fine and good for me I just kind of I don't find enjoyment in doing it a hundred percent exact uh, to me it kind of takes the the art feel away from it I feel like you should be creating something and adding to it rather than just making it exact and copying so for me I always you know I'm not trying to be exact some of my feather directions are going to be different the amount of feathers I draw will be different the colors I choose may differ slightly um, I definitely uh, have a photo a semi photo reel look um, that's part of the the fun of it but as in terms of getting it a hundred percent exact where you wouldn't be able to tell it's not a photograph that's not what I aim for all right I'm getting to the point now where I've got most of the information that I need and so where other people might go in and put a lot more detail I say you know this is probably just about enough I don't really need a whole lot more I'm pretty happy with the way most of this is looking I'll go ahead and put just a few more details in here All right, and then I'm not going to draw the background. Um, I try to paint a little more abstract with the background. I like it to kind of hint at the background rather than getting the super details in there because I want the focal point to be the the animal itself. Uh, and this is typically what I paint. Um, I I paint animals. I paint um, sometimes fantasy style uh, elements and, and creatures and things um, you can find a lot of this stuff uh, at my personal website jwkcreates.com I got all sorts of different products here even special products for today for National Bird Day um, and if you use code bird day 2024 you can get up to $20 in free shipping if you spend twenty dollars or more and I've got prints I've got photo prints I've got framed prints shirts mugs hoodies mouse pads postcards I have a photo calendar for this year that's mostly birds but also has some other animals in there all from Florida all photos that I've taken on site across the state and even some phone cases and some other random things so uh, if you like my work and you want to support me uh, jwkcreates.com got some different discount codes and options for you they can't be combined but if you like what you see and you want to support me I really appreciate it back to the drawing and painting so um, we've got our sketch down or I have my sketch down um, what I do next is I add a layer 
right beneath my sketch layer and I try to pick colors that are pretty accurate. I don't bring in my photo and I don't tend to pick the colors directly from that photo itself. Um, I like to test myself and, and my own color choices by eyeballing it. Um, I feel like I don't know if I learn a whole lot from doing color picking straight from the photo. It kind of becomes this this lazy sort of habit that doesn't teach me anything. Um, so anyway, <laughs> long, long explanation for nothing. Here we go. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a color or colors that comprise the the creature on kind of like a base level. I don't want colors that are too deep in the shadow. I don't want colors that are too bright in the light. I want something in the middle. Some some colors that are pretty safe that I can build those lights and shadows upon. And so let's see. We'll start with the, the lighter colored feathers. These are kind of white or off white. So I'm going to pick kind of like a creamy light color here. Um, if I paint it on the screen, you can see how light this looks. It probably doesn't... I find that there's a disconnect um, between what you pick on the color picker, what your eye sees, and then what you actually paint on the canvas. And so uh, this is actually a pretty light, pale, creamy color. And this is pretty much what I'm looking for um, because then I can come on top and if I paint on top of it, see how much brighter that is? It makes that color look darker. And so that's the kind of thing I'm looking for. I might even go a bit darker than the one I picked. So let me do undo for those. Go a little darker. Let's see about this one. Might be a little too dark. A little warmer and brighter. Mm. It's almost leaning to brown. Let's go. I'll shift it over. Let's try this. That is okay. What happens when I do this? Yeah, that's fine. Cool. So this color is the one I will be using. And so I'm going to look at the, the creature here, the spoonbill. And I'm going to try to paint the areas without being too, too specific. I'm going to try to paint the areas that this color would apply to in a very rough sense. This is my base color layer. Um, I'm probably going to fill in more than what I actually think I need. In fact, let's do that. Let's paint in the entire shape here. Now there are shortcuts that you can use in digital programs uh, like Clip Studio Paint and Photoshop. Um, I have and use both of those programs, but I prefer Clip Studio Paint. And with this, what I could do is I could f uh, create a line, a solid line around the object that I could then fill, um, almost like uh, creating the edge of a bucket and then filling in the bucket. Um, the problem I have with that is it doesn't always fill in every single gap. Sometimes there's a little micro layer, uh, like a line that doesn't get filled in. And I'm not, I'm not terribly happy when that happens. Uh, I find it looks sloppy. So I go the old fashioned way and fill it all in myself. Does it take a little longer? Sure. But I also find that it gives me a little more, I don't know, satisfaction when I'm painting it. Uh, depending on the brush, it can also help with the texture. So really depends on the moment. 
Anyway, like I said, I'm filling in the whole silhouette of the spoonbill. And what I'm using uh, to draw on today is a uh, Huion uh, canvas with a K uh, and a M. It's like cam like camera with a K. Uh, this, V-A-S, um, 24 plus, 24 plus. Um, there are some slightly better ones that are out, but this one is really, really good, and it was a, a big improvement from the 19 inch I had before. The 24 inches from 19 inches is a really big difference and a huge improvement. This is also much more color accurate, it's got a wider color scale, it's brighter, it's a little more durable than my other screen. Uh, I can't say enough good things about the improvement that it's been. Um, just having that extra screen real estate to, to draw upon is a huge, huge difference maker. I believe Huion is actually releasing even more uh, new products, or at least announcing them uh, next week. So that's really interesting. Uh, the other thing I use when I'm digitally painting and drawing is my iPad. Um, I have an older iPad, it's like five years old. Uh, I may upgrade it eventually, but it's a really fun tool. And I think I have a Gen 7, um, and I use Procreate. It's a art app. Uh, probably the the only art app worth getting, honestly. It's like $10, it's yours to keep forever, and you can imp import a whole bunch of brushes. Um, I personally love brushes from Aaron Blaze uh, at CreatureArtTeacher.com and Max Ulich... Uh, I won't, let me say his... <laughs> I'm going to try to say his name right. Max Ulichny. Um And he has a site called Max Packs. And uh, those brushes are super awesome. Uh, he's, he focuses specifically on making the best brushes he can for Procreate. Um, Aaron's brushes work really great in Photoshop. He also has them accessible in Procreate, at least some of them, not all of them. Um, but Max really specializes in Procreate. So if you like Procreate or you have Procreate or you want to get Procreate, I highly recommend Max's brushes. And if you do Photoshop, I highly recommend Aaron's brushes. It's all just a matter of taste. Okay, so I got the white down. Now I need to get some of those pink colors. And it's kind of like a rosy pink. It's going to be a little let me see, something like this. That's a little too saturated, I think. I need to go a little more gray. That might be a little too light. Let's go down dark. Mm, that's like a shadow. We're going to find it. We're going to find it. How about here? Mm, it's close. Oh, why is that such a jump? Oh, that's the one. That's the one. Okay. And here we go. See how I kind of, at first it doesn't want to blend all that, or I'm sorry, at first it's not all that saturated in color, and then the more I paint, it fills in. It's because it's taking that white paint and blending with it, like I said before. One of the reasons I really, really love this brush. Oh, I use uh, Clip Studio Paint, as I said before, and so you might be wondering, do uh, Max's or Aaron's brushes work in Clip Studio Paint? Uh, Aaron's do, and they work pretty seamlessly. Uh, Max's are only good for Procreate, so they won't work anywhere else. Um, the thing about Procreate is that it uses a special file type, and um, along with that file type are certain textures um, that are applied and they don't copy over well and so uh, his brushes are not good outside 
of Procreate. But errands are. They work in a lot of different applications and platforms. So anyway, <laughs> not to plug anyone too, too much, uh, but I love both of those guys. They're great. Okay. Coming up here, gets a little lighter around the top. And then it's kind of varied throughout the rest of the wing. I'm just going to fill it in, not trying to be too careful or anything. Alright, and then there are some spots on the bill that also get a little pink. Probably not this pink, it's just a placeholder pink for the time being. And there'll be some, some around the neck. Most of this is white. And then there's going to be some residual pink shadow from the wing over here. So I'll just lay in that base pink color. And we'll take care of making it more accurate with shadow later. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to increase the size of my brush. I'm going to very lightly go over these areas here. Because his underbelly is also slightly pink. Kind of a gradient down into the rest of his body there. I hope if you're watching, whether you're watching with me live or you're watching this after the fact, I hope you're having a great day. I hope that you're feeling well and that you're having a good start to your 2024. All right. Got that. Cool. All right, now to get some other colors. So he's got some kind of like grayish blue on his bill. Let's see, is that the right color? It's a little too light. Got to go a little darker and grayer. That's kind of close. Go a little more gray. That's it. Okay, so I'm going to turn down the size. And I'm going to paint under here a bit. And this is all in the same color layer. I'm not separating it. Uh, part of the reason is I want these paints to, to blend together, uh, to feel a little more connected, a little more harmonious. And his, his face is mostly this grayish color here. He's got a harder texture to his skin near the top. I'll get that in a minute. Just going to finish coloring in this gray area first. I would like to make streaming a more regular thing. Um, I am entering into a fairly busy month or so, so I'm not sure how consistent I'll be able to be, but then after that month I should have a lot more availability, and we'll just see how it goes. I don't want to make any promises, but that's at least what I'm thinking. 
I hope you like my video. If you do like it, if you're having a good time, if you're learning something or you're just enjoying the peaceful vibes I'm trying to put out here and, and pass along, uh, go ahead and give me a like on this video, uh, whatever platform you're watching on. And if you know people who would also like it, please share it with them. I find that if I do this kind of scribbly feel, it almost has that same look of feathers, right? I can refine later and add some more detail and all that kind of stuff. All right, coming up to the top. He's got some patterns up here. Some of them get darker, so I'll press a little harder so that it doesn't blend so much as stick out. Get that. Good. And then it starts to kind of get up in here. And then it's dark under this bill here. What I'll probably do is erase some of that to have a cleaner edge. Messy edges ended up making your painting feel a little too sloppy and not so dynamic and a lot of other things there. And darken up some of the spots under his eye here. Alright, so for the back of his head, uh, oh wait, I gotta get the legs too. There we go. Can't forget his little spoonbill legs. Now you notice that the color for the legs is pretty similar to the background. Not to worry, the background is going to change color very soon. Um, I like to put in the background, well, I kind of go back and forth. But I, I think, in general, when I'm thinking about it, I prefer to put the background after I've got the the base color layer um, before I start adding lights and shadows. It just gives me a better sense of how those lights and shadows can play with the background. Um, but we'll see. I'm going to go ahead and erase this stuff. I don't need this anymore. All right. So I got the legs. I got the feathers. I might add a little more specific color difference down here. Because um, some of these feathers down this way are a little darker, a little more gray, a little more saturated, even though they're still still in shadow, still not 100%. Uh, I don't know what I was going to say. And then probably go for like this kind of color, bigger brush, and then around here, add it there, add some down this way, and pay attention to the way that the feathers go, they kind of go sideways a little bit. Cool, cool. And definitely under here, because we have that overlap on the body. And even under here a little bit. Alright, and so now I'll do a little bit of cleanup with 
some of the areas where I went out a little bit outside of my lines just to clean it up like down here and here it's not all that important but I'm still doing it okay the other thing I would always I used to be a graphic arts teacher and I would tell my students all the time label your layers have I done that no am I terrible about doing it yeah so I'll call this sketch and this is base color cool all right and both of these layers are just set to normal it means we're not changing how the layer behaves it's just taking the brush as the brush comes there are all sorts of different layers you can use in order to affect how the brushes are perceived as you paint them um, and so I'll get into those in a little bit what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add another layer it's going to go beneath the base color and this is going to be my background and so I'm going to like I said I go very abstract I'm still going to use the same brush. I've used the same brush for this entire painting so far. Um, I think a lot of people get stuck on brushes and overwhelmed by brushes. And then I know that I used to have that same problem. Um, I find that the more I do digital painting, the more I lean toward specific brushes that I like. And it's not so much about how many brushes can I have so much as what are the best brushes that I tend to go to the most and so this oil paint one is my go-to anytime I do anything in clip studio paint okay um, so the background uh, I'm gonna try to keep it pretty similar to the to the photograph in terms of the lighting and composition so uh, I'm gonna pick something kinda in the cool greens very dark Let's see, how does this look? Is that about right? It's at least close. So I'll go ahead and fill that in. Actually, for this particular moment, I might do a fill. Most of this background is going to be this exact color. Ah, see what I mean about that fill though? Gives me that awful color there. So I'll just, I'll, I'll teach myself a lesson and I'll paint over this. Course correct. And get that spot there and grab all that. And when you have a big brush, it tends to lag a little bit. What is that? Is that my screen? There's something there. I'm gonna zoom in. No, that is the painting. Oh, that must be something I didn't erase. <laughs> I'm like, why can't I get rid of that? That's exactly what that is. All right. I do not like that. I hate that spot. Alright, I'm going to undo. And then I'm just going <laughs> to erase from here. There we go. That's better. I don't like that smudge that it had. Alright, what is that? Oh, it's a spot I missed. Nice and easy. That's fine. Okay. Without overdoing it. So that's the base color for the background. Uh, it also helps me see areas of the the character that I might have uh, neglected to properly erase, like this 
piece of the neck here. Just like that. And then a little over here. And a little of that. All right. Uh, next up is still part of the background. I'm going to leave that particular layer alone. And I'm going to paint on top of it. And I'm going to get some lighter greens and blues and yellows in here. So let's see, we'll go for maybe like the medium green first. That looks about right. Go bigger. And grab some of this up here. I might even go a little bit bigger. Just, just trying to be really rough, abstract, not trying to make anything super, super detailed. Like I said, this isn't going to be the main focal point anyway. We don't want it to steal the attention from the main piece. And it's just about adding step-by-step step, little details things over time it's not about rushing and I'll add some lighter kind of speckled things on this side and little little hints that color changes over there and up this way up this way all right got some more more this way And I'm deviating a, a, a tad from the original image. Okay, and now we need some greens kind of along the same spectrum. Can blend those right in here. Have them go along with it kind of complementarily. If that's a word. And I'm just kind of just being really random, not trying to be specific. I'm going back and forth looking between uh, the, the painting and the photograph I'm using as reference, just kind of taking note of where certain color clusters are. Right. And you'll notice that the more I the more I do this and the more these colors kind of blend and work in contrast with one another, uh, the more it starts to look and feel like a like a place and not just a bunch of scribbly lines. At least I hope. That's that's the goal. Um, you may be wondering how long have I been painting? Uh, I have been drawing uh, almost my whole life, as early back as I can remember. Uh, my dad used to draw and paint and he would display his work at conventions and I got to meet a lot of really interesting professional artists that way um, 
and I was always inspired by that um, and by watching him it just kind of uh, came natural and I didn't really think a whole lot about drawing I just knew I liked to do it um, and I colored a lot when I was much younger like most people um, took some art classes I mean obviously elementary school art was one of my favorite subjects um, it was definitely fun I had great teachers who made it fun too so a lot of credit to them uh, I think I think when you enjoy classes that you have especially in elementary and, and middle and uh, on up um, might take for granted uh, just how awesome the teachers you have are um, because you don't know any better until you have a bad teacher until you have someone who just maybe shouldn't be doing what they're doing um, and then makes you miss those those good ones that you had and I definitely uh, I haven't seen uh, those art teachers that I used to have in a long time and um, <laughs> if they're watching because I, I have connected with some of them um, you know just want to say thanks uh, for continuing to be uh, an encouragement to me in those times and you know believing in me and all that kind of stuff um, teachers in general especially art teachers uh, I have a somewhat biased opinion there, uh, but they often don't get the the credit they deserve for the amount of time and effort and planning and care they put into their lessons. So kudos to all the art teachers out there. All right. It's starting to look like something. <laughs> starting. need to take a quick look at my reference and see oh hey howdy to those on Instagram who are watching me go thank you for being here I think I got some people watching me now on Twitch as well. Thank you. Um, okay, so back to the photo here. Hmm. Okay, got some got some more speckled stuff down here at the bottom, and even a even a rogue leaf just kind of poking itself out there. A couple rogue leaves. To add some change in here. All right, and there is even some yellow and some blue and some lighter colors and all that kind of stuff. So uh, let's go with the blue first. Let's try. Maybe something a little more saturated. Let's try this. Might need to lower the brush size to help it stand out. Uh, I 
think it's got to be a little more, a little more bright and saturated than that. Try that. That's it. That's the one. Get some in there. There's just kind of little touches of this blue on and off throughout. I believe it is a gap in the foliage. Hard to say. Some of it is more easy to tell than some of the others. All right, so it's not blending in the best at the moment, but that's okay. Um, what I'll probably do is I'll come back later on and try to address that maybe with some overlap. Okay, uh, now I need some kind of yellowy greens. It's still a little subdued. What does this look like? What is this? Oh, that's perfect. That's exactly what I was looking for. I'll fix that later. I don't like how that last one looks. But tapping in. Tapping in some of these colors over here. And depending on how this comes out, uh, my ultimate plan here would be to actually put this up on my store. So hopefully, hopefully this comes out well and I feel good enough to stick it on some art prints. This way as well. All right. Like I said, I deviate a little bit from the photo reference, so I'm just kind of, just kind of feeling it out, seeing where this is gonna take me. Um, I do uh, regular traditional paintings as well. Um, in fact, um, I'm almost at the point now where I'll be ready to start selling some original pieces. Um, I don't have 
enough finished yet where I feel comfortable starting to put them out, but almost, almost there. Uh, and once, once I get going with that, um, you'll be able to buy those probably right on my site. Uh, that's my, my plan. So we'll see, uh, we'll see how soon that happens. Uh, I would say in the next month or two, probably. Because I know some people are not uh, all that excited about prints, but they like originals. And so, if that's you, should be something coming your way soon if you buy my original pieces. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Sometimes I get so distracted by the painting that I forget how to speak. All right. Now for some lighter greens. This is going to be in the kind of like light bluish green area. Almost like a mint. I might make these bigger just so it's a little more like washy feeling like a kind of washed out sort of color there oh, and it's doing an auto save ooh Speaking of which, oh my goodness, I have not saved this. So file, save as, and we'll call it, uh, he's kind of, he's kind of looking, so we'll call it, uh, suspicious spoon bill. And we'll save this to the desktop. I'll put it in my art folder as a Clip Studio file and save. Perfect. Whew, that would have been bad. All this time and have it disappear? That would be awful. It's happened before. Not so much with my art, but with my animation. I've had complete animation files just disappear after working several hours on them. 3D animation files. Not not a good thing. There's not as much highlight on this side, and it's probably good because it'll help the the spoon bill to stand out. There's a little bit over here, and up in up in this way.
All right. I mean, you, you see, this is all very much abstract. It's not anything overly defined. That's exactly the way I want it. Okay. And I think the only other thing I'll do is I'll add some dark spots. Uh, so here's that color picker. I'll grab this. Go back to my oil brush smaller with it and then just kind of plug in some darker areas here So uh, why, why am I painting over uh, some of those areas again uh, with the same color as the background? Uh, it's in order to help some of these areas that I feel aren't quite working well uh, to kind of marry back into the image. It's another reason I really, really love this basic oil brush that the program comes with is that it really helps blend and so it borrows colors and helps them feel a little more connected and then the more I lay down the more uh, it darkens so it all, it all works out really well Grab some of this too, because I think that's just a little too much.
lot of these random choices are also kind of intuition based um, from lots of painting um, and just kind of knowing what will look right and what will look off. So uh, the ultimate plan here, after I've made these little adjustments on and off, is to blur the background slightly so that you can't really see all the little imperfections of the brush strokes. And it ends up really just looking like something that our eyes are trying to piece together, can't quite do it, but still pleasing to the eye. It's definitely a little darker over through here. And then even through here. I think that's enough messing around with the background for the moment. And so now it'll be on to getting the rest of this bird done. So um, if you're just joining, uh, today is National Bird Day. Uh, and so I am drawing a bird, a spoonbill, uh, in honor of that. So um, I'm going to go ahead and everything I do now is going to be on top of whatever I've painted. Um, so I'm going to go above that sketch layer there and add a layer. Oh, and I'm already breaking my rules here. So this is uh, solid dark background. And this is uh, background texture and then here is going to be uh, shadows all right and so for a shadow layer um, I've done it multiple ways um, sometimes I go in with just normal layer and paint dark colors um, especially with this oil brush which blends with the colors um, it's really nice to be able to do that um, something else I do is uh, probably the more common method which is to go into the layer options make sure you have the right layer selected and click multiply and what this does is it takes the color that you're painting and it lays it on top of all the colors beneath it but at a transparent level and in this method it darkens that transparency. And I'll show you what I mean. So I have this shadow layer. I want to tone it down. I'll put it at like 40, 40%. 40 and shadows are cool colors, so it's going to be somewhere down here in this bluish range, grayish blue. Might even lean. Eh. 
Right there is fine. Okay. Now because the opacity is low, look what happens. Right? When I paint, it's it's pretty see-through, right? Um, if I were to do this on a different layer, say we'll go to this one so you can actually see it, right? It's pretty solid, right? Look how different that looks compared. But on this multiply layer, it just darkens the values underneath. So it's like, if you ever looked through uh, that, uh, what is it? It's almost like colored um, plastic wrap. That's what this is doing, essentially. So. I'm going to add in the shadows. And this is where we're going to start to see a lot more depth and dimension. The shadows and the highlights really go a long way in making a 2D painting look more lifelike, more three-dimensional. I'm not trying to make it look 3D per se. I'm not trying to make it like pop out at your eyes, but I am trying to make it look like it has depth. Whoop, and I just realized something before I continue. I completely forgot to darken the head spot behind his eye. And so I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to pick a really dark color here. I'm going to paint that in on a normal layer. It was very silly of me to forget that. And it's saving again. There we go. <laughs> that was it. Okay, back to the multiply layer. And I'm going to grab that, that blue color again. It's always a good idea to double check that you're on the right layer before you get too far into anything. Which I am, so it's good. And then adding some shadow over here. Probably better if I zoom in, huh? That's the other benefit of having a drawing monitor and working digitally is you can zoom in as much as you want. in here. Now at this stage when I'm painting in these shadows it's mostly just for the effect of the lighting. This is not a finalized shadow for me. Um, maybe this is more work for some. For me this helps me to make sure that I'm getting things as accurate as I can with my particular order of doing things. And so, we got this a little bit bigger. Grab that. got 
some shadow up over here, darker in some spots than others. You can kind of work lightly to get those accentuated. What I'll ultimately do is I'll end up painting on top of even this layer with a more normal layer instead of the multiply. This is mostly just to kind of pinpoint where certain things are going to go and then to darken up certain areas. If you're still here, thanks for being with me. If you're just joining, thanks for stopping by. Uh, painting a spoon bill for National Bird Day today. National Bird Day. I also have some discounts on my website uh, for bird-related products today. If you go to my store, jwkcreates.com, if you enter in Bird Day 2024, you can save on shipping up to $20 free shipping for products or for orders where you spend $20 or more. Let's zoom out and we can see how this is looking. See, even just adding that little bit of shadow, starting to make this thing look like it's got a little more dimension. And I'll do the same over here. I don't even have to really worry so much about changing the color. Um, you know, shadows are usually cool colors. And so as long as I pick a cool color without going too crazy or too opaque, uh, it should still work for what I want to do. these wings that are completely in shadow or that wing wings not multiple and go up this way And 
for this area because so much of it is in shadow. We're just going to go ahead and fill that in. We're going to go ahead and save this again because we definitely do not want to lose it. I'm just going to check and see anybody leaving comments or chatting or anything. Oh, thanks, Martin. Appreciate it, buddy. All right. Okay, let's go back to, do, 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 there we go, and cool. Uh, I'm just going to have a little bit of water. It's important to stay hydrated. Especially when you talk so much. <laughs> uh, all right, here we go. That's enough of that. Wonderful. All right. So, now that we got this, here's where we go and start making it come alive. Because right now it's still just kind of, even though it looks like it has some depth, we see the shadow, we see the light, there's still that scribbliness. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn down the opacity of this sketch layer. Not a crazy amount, so I want to be able to see certain things. Uh, but I'm going to add a layer on top. And it's going to stay normal. I'm going to go ahead and color pick and grab the colors that I have. And then go back to my oil brush. I'm going to go and zoom in. I'm going to start adding a little more detail here. this size. Okay. Here comes the scary part. I'm going to paint right over those lines.
right and you see how that's painting right over that sketch layer this is what I like to do I feel like I feel like I'm a little unique in this way a lot of people what they like to do is kind of use the sketch layer um, and then turn it off I like to keep it on and paint right over it there might be other people who do it but it's what I like to do And I'll zoom out just to double check, see how this is looking. I have this image over here, which is also helpful, but I, I like to kind of just go back and forth and really give my eye as much information as I can. Okay, I think it's looking fine. I'm gonna go ahead and paint over this area. Just kind of lightly, not to make a pun here, but feathering, lightly feathering in some of these strokes so that they blend a little more easily. Put the image beneath it. Got this over here. If you're still watching, could you do me a favor? Could you let me know in the chat if this is live streaming on YouTube? It tells me that it is, but when I've looked, I can't see it. Uh, the YouTube is the same as 
my other stuff, JWK creates. Only if you're still there. Only if you can. <laughs> I I spent a while this morning trying to get everything uh, connected. And I got just about everything to work. Instagram, Facebook, Twitch. Uh, but I, I can't tell if YouTube is working or not. If it's not, I will have to try and figure it out another time. think think that looks all right uh, and then we got some highlight over here So, all right. Hmm. Blot some of this out so that's not so noticeable. area where uh, I'm feathering in the details. Hmm. All right, I'll have to look into YouTube next time. Thanks, uh, thanks, Martin. Yeah, I'll have to see what happened. The YouTube didn't show up um, earlier uh, when I went through it until the stream stopped, uh, and then it posted, which I thought was weird. So it must be a setting I have wrong. I have to double check. It should technically, by the way I set it up, automatically work. But oh well. Okay, here's it, it's not so much important like on the on the body of the the painting here like how how accurate things are in the in the centers of the image where it really matters is on the edges you want the edges if you want them to look like feathers you gotta make sure that you are taking the time to observe and delicately place those in if you can make your egg edges look like feathers the rest will also be believable most likely.
I guess it depends on you, doesn't it? Working on the wing now. Just saying it in case you lost where I am. It is saving again. And I mean, if you look up over here at the small image, you can really start to see the the difference there in the the lighting. <laughs> Let me uh, let me look at my other monitor here, cause I just want to make sure that the colors are looking okay. Hmm. I'll probably have to come back in and do some more uh, color work later. All right. Um. Got to work on the beak now.
and little by little, this is starting to really come together. And as I mentioned before, uh, what I like to do is I like to listen to music when I play, or not play. <laughs> well, I am playing. I am having. <laughs> I'm having fun. Uh, but when I uh, paint, um, today I'm listening to uh, Hawaiian songs by, mostly by, uh, Israel. Israel, Ko Kamika Wo Olele, or Wo Wo Le. Wa o ole. <laughs> I still can't say his name. Sorry. I love his music. Oops. Undo. see this one's gonna be a little tricky I might even have to adjust my monitor a little bit but let's see I need to get this beak corrected it's a little messed up over here there should not be this extra gap underneath so I wonder if I go back to here if I erase it Try to get it a little more pinpoint. Let me. Oh, that's the blender. <laughs> Whoops. sketch layer. Gotta get rid of some of those. Okay. 
think that got it. And then I gotta just do a little bit of cleanup on this part. There we go. Okay. And we'll zoom out. And this is probably a good time to save. Okay, so next up, let's do, let's go ahead and do the eye. That eye is like a orangey. Orangey brown. Oh, that's the eraser. Go ahead and just grab a really dark color. top gonna go to my multiply lower that down to 40 again grab the blue increase the brush size and then
It's coming along. We're getting there. Zoom out. Oh yeah. On my other monitor, it looks so much darker. Let me check something real quick. I must just be the stream. There's a slight difference. Okay. Well, it probably looks a little darker on the stream for whatever reason. I don't know why. Okay, here we go. Uh, darken the beak.
You know, it's just a lot of little, a lot of little things that build up and give you a really nice look. A lot of times, I don't know if, if uh, everyone watching is someone who paints or not, but a lot of times when you get frustrated with the way a piece is coming out, you're probably like 15 minutes from being happy with it and you just give up on it too early because you're looking at you're looking at it the wrong way you're looking at it from you want it to be finished already instead of taking the time to cultivate it and just bring it right out of that little spot there where it's stuck I can't tell you how many times I've had to relearn that lesson because I get frustrated with myself. But really, it's just sticking with it. It's making sure that I, I give it the time it needs to be at the quality I like. I think that's why a lot of people say they can't do art. They just give up too soon. I definitely uh, wasn't born drawing like this. And I have a long way to go from where I want to be. And I hope that that's always the case. I never want to be so into my own art that I feel like I can't improve. There's always something to learn. There's always something new to try. I face that situation a lot with uh, with students when I would teach. I'm not a teacher anymore, but um, when I was a teacher, I found that a lot of students would get frustrated because they just didn't have enough patience with themselves to work out the problem. And so part of being a teacher wasn't just, you know, instructing, but it was also encouraging and, and reaching students who we're ready to toss in the towel way too early and helping them to see that they can do it. Uh, I think some of this needs to be erased. You gotta get a little more of an angle. And I'll go back to the base color layer and do the same. Yeah, this is where it gets a little tricky sometimes. It's like trying to find that perfect curve because if you do it in the wrong spot, it just looks wrong. And it could be off just by like a sliver. Oh, I see it, I see it. I know where to go. That's better. And then this top area here too.
And I think some of my multiply here needs to go to. Oh, unless that's something else, maybe that's here. Nope. Is that sketch? Nope. Is that base color? Ah, you know what it is? It's this. I just had to blend some of those colors down. There we go. <laughs> That's all it was. Okay. Back up to my normal layer. Actually, I'm going to play it a little safe and I'm gonna paint on top so I'm gonna label this one for sure uh, we'll call this uh, color feathers and I need to make sure that I get these uh, Got to get him in the right range. Oh, it's so it's so tricky sometimes to get that right color though. Let's try this and hope for the best. Oh, it's a little too bright. Maybe if I put it underneath. Underneath here. How's that? Aha! Yes. That's what I wanted. Perfect. Got some up in here too.
Now I gotta work on the lower body and get some color retention in here. Just gonna lightly, lightly brush over some of these areas to help blend it in a little more. Get a little bit bigger over here. Do, 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 do. Let's save it. File, save. Whew, been on for a while, two and a half. Let's keep going. Getting there, getting there. Um, I need something a little, a little cooler. And a little more gray. Let's try this. See how this looks. Yeah. That's good.
that would have bothered me. I would have been like, where did that come from? Zoom out again, let's see how it's coming along. Getting there. file, save, and this is where I kind of start not caring about the amount of layers I have, and I start adding them like a crazy person. It's okay. You can do that. Uh, I'll edit on top. Why not? And then I'll color pick and I want to go a little warmer still in that kind of gray side I'm gonna go very light Might be a little too, a little too hot, because it almost looks like it's lighting it up. Hmm, that might be good over here though. Yeah, I kind of like it there. Oh, you know where else this might be good? Down in the tail. Let's try it. Yep. So it is the color I needed. It's just not the one I thought I wanted. It 
happen sometimes. Try again. Let's find a different color. It's going to be... That seems wrong. But we'll try it. <laughs> it's kind of in the right area. Yeah, it's it's in the ballpark. Oddly enough. This is also the right color for over here. And I know the the feathers on the wing look a little messy at the moment, but some cleanup with some lighter colors will go a long way in helping that. So that's not something I'm going to stress about. It's just something I'm going to fix a little later. The more I think about it, the more I have a problem with this area over here. Go away. It 
And then, I think it was this layer. Yep. Assuming. Nope. How about this one? 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 You should have labeled your layers. I know. I hear it already. Was it really the sketch layer? That's crazy. It did not look like a sketch. Cool. I think I'm going to lighten this area too on that sketch layer. Those hard lines there are just a little too much. I'm just kind of feathering it. Get rid of those. You know what? What if I just turn off the sketch layer? Ooh, nope, I'm keeping it. <laughs> oh boy. It stays. But I will get rid of some of these lines down here whose services are no longer required.
is it? Hmm. Nope, that's not it. Is it this one? Something like that. Okay. Here we go. Grab that color again. And lightly brush it on. If you're still here, thanks for sticking with me all this time. My goodness. Going on three hours now. Just about. But it's worth it.
it's a lot of back and forth and fix this and fix that and adjust this again and oh this looks nice move that there and but it all comes together just gotta be patient mostly with yourself Still working on these feathers.
time to save. And I'm just going to double check and look how it looks on my other monitor, make sure my colors are okay. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little dark. I can uh can probably fix that with like hue and saturation or something. All right. Let's check the chat and see how everyone's doing. Oh my goodness. The whole gang is here. Oh my goodness. Hi. <laughs> A wise, man's, a wise man once said, there we go. <laughs> oh my goodness. Alright, well. Let's, let's keep going. We're almost done. I think. I don't know. I might change my mind. <laughs> I gotta look at the chat more. I have it off, off screen like a silly person. That's better. Okay, now I'll be able to see when you heckle me. Uh, let's try this. Let's warm up some of this. Shadow in here and blend it a little more. <laughs> Does Martin do anything else? You're fired. No, you're not fired. You haven't done anything yet. You gotta earn it. Oh, I I know what he's after. slightly warmer with this one. Hopefully it's not too in contrast. No, I think it looks all right. a little too much. So is this over here. Got to soften that a bit.
What's everybody up to today, other than watching me? Shameless plug time again. Oh, trying to finish my New Year's animation. Should be done by 2025. Nice. Uh, shameless plug. My website. Now, I only sell to the U.S., so if you're outside the U.S., that's your excuse not to buy. Uh, but I have a bunch of stuff here, including... National Bird Day. I got a bunch of bird stuff. Bird art prints and photos. Look at all these photos I got. So many photos. Anyway, JWK Creates. That's my website. You can check it out. Even if you can't buy anything, you can take a look and there you go. Back to painting. <laughs> Is this? No, I need to go maybe here. I'm going to add a layer just in case I mess it up. Let's play it safe. Yeah, that's good. There's a little bit of under reflection down here. If, oh wait, <laughs> you were working on your sewing machine before, I missed that comment. <laughs> you know, I might eventually uh, sell outside the U.S., but um, there are a lot of uh, rules and fees and applications and everything to to do that and right now I'm just starting out so small operation maybe I'll build up to sell international but uh, I'd rather keep it simple for the time being Oh yeah, that, I wasn't even talking about the shipping. The shipping's awful. Oof. That's why uh, my current promo on my site for National Bird Day is uh, free shipping up to $20. You can still get a f fair amount for free shipping on that, but uh, it doesn't take long for it to say, oh, that's too much. being so careful.
I don't want to get too crazy. I could very easily spend another hour just on this one little area, but I won't. I will restrain myself. I do like playing with the color though and seeing what happens when I blend it somewhere else. <laughs> And I can sit here and go, ooh. Mm, I don't like what that did there. Go away. Undo, undo. Undo. Okay. Phew. I'll fix that later with a highlight. Don't let me forget. I might look and go, hey, this is finished now, and then forget the highlight. And it'll be your fault because I told you. Let's, oh, actually, yeah, that's not bad. <laughs> I, I don't want to, I don't want to take uh, Aaron's shtick there. He's, he's the one who fires. If he was a zombie, I could say he's undead to me. All right, let's let's play around with the beak a little bit more because I'm missing a lot of the defining detail, and his beak looks very flat. Let's prove to everyone that you are not a flat beak. Hey, more people! 
Yay! <laughs> what kind of bird is this? This is a spoonbill. They are not all that unlike flamingos. Ooh, that's darker. No, no, no. What about under the eye? Ah, it works there. Lovely. Hang on. Hold on. Reverse, reverse. I was doing it right. There we go. Hooray! Auto save time. Ask more questions. Talk. Do your job. That's officially your job now, is to talk. It doesn't pay much. In fact, it doesn't pay anything at all. I suppose that counts as talking. Talking to you. Am I using Photoshop? No, I'm using Clip Studio Paint up here. I'm at 350 DPI and uh, 36 by 24 inches canvas. 
because that's the biggest that my my store or I use Printful uh, to print my stuff. That's the biggest size that they go. And if I don't make it big enough, then it complains that hey, your resolution might not be good enough to print. It's like, but it looks good on my screen. <laughs> Anyway. It's National Bird Day, so you get a bird. Along with bird related discounts at my store. Yeah, I do like Printful though. I'm not really complaining all that much. I've ordered some products from them uh, from my store to test. And they've all been great. <laughs> That's a good one. I like that. It's true, though. Oh, too dark. Oh, no. Paid a pair of shoes and was very happy. Oh, nice. I haven't tried uh, buying any of the clothes yet. Um, I do have them available in my store, but uh, I have not tried to sample those. Uh, the only clothing close thing that I've ordered is a hat. I got an embroidered hat, and I really like it. And I'm really more like hinting at the edge of his neck there. I don't want it to be too dominant a focus, but it does need to be it does need to be seen. I think that helps a little bit. That'd be neat. Yes, I am. I'm using a reference photo. One that I took. That's how I like to do it. Um, whoop. I keep forgetting. It's because it looks light down here, and then I put it on something light. Something actually light. And it goes, oh no, I'm much too dark for that. That one's awful, Martin. I wish Aaron was here so he could fire you.
I mean, far away, the beak doesn't look bad. But you get close, and ugh. I can't leave it like that. I have to fix it. And I'll do it. I think it was this one. I'm gonna try to blend. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I, I, I said it earlier, so forgive me if you're hearing it again. But uh, for me, when I'm painting, I'm not out for like a hyper photorealistic look. I'm looking for something that looks realistic, but still has that painterly quality. And so the textures for me are a huge, huge part of that. I think I need to go, is it this one? Nope, must be this one. Nope, here we go again. Ah, uh, that's this one. I just noticed that he's got like this bend in his beak. Oh gosh. No. The race. Go away. Oh no. It's not that layer. We'll find it. Is it this one? Nope. Is it this one? Nope. Is it this one? Yes. Better-ish.
do you think it's better to try and stay from photorealistic? Uh, it's a personal taste. I think it's a, you know, it, it's a challenge to do it. Um, people who can do it, all the power to them. You know, I think it's a skill in and of itself. But I feel like it kind of takes away from the creative side of painting. It's not very creative to make something exactly the same. Um, and so for me, where the creativity comes in is the textures I use and the the emphasis I place on certain parts, the colors I mix. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like it's more appealing to look at something that's got a little more uh, variance to it, uh, something imperfect. And when you're doing a photorealistic, you're aiming for perfection. And I just feel like that's not as entertaining. It's different than a photo because in and of the world of photos, you're you're trying to get composition and lighting and and all that but with a camera like you have limitations that's your tool that's what you're trying to do it's just I, I don't know I, I could I could try to explain it but for me it's just not as it's not as rewarding artistically to do exact photorealism I personally always like it to have that painterly look. Uh, I think I need, I think I need to blend some of those. Yeah, I mean, I've I've gotten comments like that too. I mean, if you shrink this down, right? You're probably going to think that's a photo. That's just that's just the nature of light and shadow and detail being added to your painting, right? Um, but getting up close, you know, you can definitely tell that it's a painting. Hello. Where are we? Three and a half hours in. This is what I've done. I'll probably finish it. Pretty close. What am I doing? Martin, tell me what I'm doing. The beak details, I know that's what you're going to say.
I knew I could count on you. <laughs> Retrying. Yeah, I'm half there. It's not exactly redrawing, but it is. That's probably my worst habit. Like fixing something just to put it back in. I don't know why. I think it's because I'm still deciding. That's just what happens sometimes. Hey, it's true. I am getting hungry. Not quite dinner time though. And I had lunch. So I don't know. I have a question. That's right, I'm the one asking now. What is everyone's favorite music 
to draw or paint to or whatever creative thing you like to do. And if you're watching this after the fact, you can leave me a message in the comments. It's fine. I'm still curious, even if you're not here with me now. Film music, classical or movie scores, or whatever inspires me. Hmm. I do like film scores. I guess it depends on the particular thing I'm doing. I usually listen to film scores when I'm writing, when I'm working on my novel. Uh, 60s or 70s rock. I'm more of a 80s rock. Uh, when I paint, that's what I listen to. 80s rock or Hawaiian um, or uh, uh, Celtic. Celtic music. I really do like painting to Celtic music. Yeah, my favorite movie score to listen to is uh, Lord of the Rings. Especially since my novel is a fantasy novel. I mean, how can you not use Lord of the Rings when you're writing? It's too perfect. I'm going to have to erase some of that. I went a little too far. Let's get a little bit of a curve in. All right, I don't have to overly focus on that spot. That's fine if I move around. Jumanji. Oh, that's a good one, yeah. You talking about the... Oh, yeah, the ni 1995, yeah. I remember seeing that in the theater. It was one of the first times I went to uh, 
a nighttime movie as a kid. I was like, but it's a school night. Gotta just get the angle right, that's all. Oh, it's saving again. Speaking of which, I should probably save. And then I gotta blend. Blend that back just a little bit. Just the edges, nothing crazy. I don't want to repaint it again. All right, time for a multiply layer.
want to be a little bit sparing. Oh, thank you, Martin. Careful what you say. Thanks, Erica. Gotta work on those legs. Can't forget those.
Smudgy time. Looks good.
going to pick a different shadow color for that area. But over here it should be okay. Blending time. Oof. Man, isn't it always like the last like 10% that takes the longest amount of time to do? That's the way. Gonna do a normal layer, color pick, grab that pink, and Gently fix this area. Okay. Might be highlight time. Oh wait, I wanted to get some warm. Uh, mm -mm. Do I do it? I don't know. All right, all right. Highlight time. Bright color. Pretty hot and warm. And delicately.
All right. It is time to sign it. I think we're done. Four and a half hours later. It's a spoon bill, so I have to sign in some sort of uh, pinky color. And I'll go ahead and let's see how this goes. Probably sign that down here. Oof. everybody thank you so much if you stuck around this whole time and thank you for the friendly chat and good times I hope you enjoyed the image happy bird day don't forget if you're looking for bird things to fill up your life go to jwkcreates.com I've got a bunch of awesome products on there that I've personally photographed or drawn, painted myself. Uh, it's all print on demand, ready whenever you order it. It'll get printed and sent out to you as long as you're in the U.S. And yeah, it just supports me. So uh, if you decide to do that, thank you so much for your support. And if not, totally okay. Thanks for hanging with me. And I hope you have a fantastic birthday. Bye.